Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna go through the six components of homeostasis, and we're gonna provide some examples of positive and negative feedback. So homeostasis is the body's ability to maintain a stable internal environment. Regardless of what's happening outside or inside, the body always tries to respond to make sure we remain happy and healthy. Let's provide an example straight off the bat. Let's just say we go outside into the Queensland summer, Queensland is where I live, Queensland summer and it's 40 degrees Celsius. This is hot. Our body wants to maintain an internal temperature of 37 degrees. So this increase in temperature, our body feels and we start to get hot. Now, if we started to continue to get hot, we're ultimately gonna get sick and potentially die. We don't want this, so the body responds to maintain a stable internal body temperature. And it does this by allowing us to sweat. That's one example. So this is an example of homeostasis. Now let's first go through the six different components of homeostasis, and then let's provide examples of positive and negative feedback. Now, the first stage or component of homeostasis is there always must be a stimulus. Now, if we use that example of going out into the heat, the stimulus there is an increase in temperature. So maybe we'll write this down as an example. Increase in temperature. That's the stimulus. Now, the thing is this. All environmental stimuli need to be picked up by receptors. If we don't have receptors for it, it's gonna be very hard for our body to know whether there's a change in the environment. So the second step must be receptors. The stimulus gets picked up by receptors. So stimulus to receptors. Now in this case, receptors that pick up temperature changes are called thermoreceptors. So we can pop that in the example. Thermoreceptors. And then what do the receptors do? So they take a particular signal, it could be a chemical, it could be a temperature, it could be whatever it may be, and it takes it and it transduces it into an electrical signal. Now what does the receptor do with this electrical signal? It needs to send it somewhere. Now, sending it somewhere means it needs to send it to the control center. Now, what's the control center? There's no one part of the body that is the control center. In this case, the control center is going to be the brain. The brain is what needs to receive this information from the receptors in order to understand what's going on. Now, for receptors to send the signal to the brain, it sends it via what we call an afferent signal. So going towards the control center is an afferent signal. Afferent signal, like I said, this is going toward the control center. I'll just write CC for control center. Now, once that afferent signal gets to the control center, and like I said, in this case, the control center is going to be the brain, what's going to happen? Now, the brain is going to take this information that ultimately has come from the receptors. And it says, one, it evaluates the information. It says, what have I just received? I've received information from the thermoreceptors of the body saying it's getting too hot. Then it needs to decide what to do. And what it will do in this scenario goes, well, it's getting too hot. I need to drop the temperature back down. So it's now evaluated the information and made a decision as to what to do. And then it sends a signal out. This outward signal going away from the control center is called an efferent signal. So that's the next step. An efferent signal. And this goes away from the control center. Now here's the thing, the efferent signal will be sending this signal coming from the control center to an effector. The efferent signal sends a signal to an effector. And what would an effector do? It makes a change. It has an effect, right? So the effector makes a change. Now, what would the effector be in this case? Well, remember we said sweating. So the effector will be sweat glands. Now, the effector which is eliciting the change, being sweating, 
What is the ultimate outcome of this whole process? If you sweat, the wind or breeze comes past, takes the heat that's radiated out through your sweat away from the body and your body temperature drops. So the outcome here is a drop in temperature. Have a look at this. The stimulus was a rise in body temperature. The outcome was a drop in body temperature. This is what we call negative feedback in homeostasis. Negative feedback. Now, a lot of students get caught up with the term negative thinking it always has to go down. That's not true. If we were to flip this and say that the stimulus was a very cold day, you go outside and it's minus 30 degrees Celsius, well, the stimulus this time is a drop in temperature. Thermoreceptors pick this up, sends a viral signal to the control center being the brain. The brain says it's too cold, what do I need to do? I need to warm up. How can I warm up? I know I can shiver, which is telling muscle to contract, relax, contract, relax. So it sends it via an efferent signal to the effector, which in this case would be muscles. Then the muscles would shiver and the outcome would be an increase in temperature. That's still negative feedback, why? Because in negative feedback, the outcome, the effect, the outcome negates or does the opposite of what the stimulus is. Negative feedback negates or does the opposite of the stimulus or stimuli if it's plural. Make sense? All right, now we need to talk about positive feedback. Now positive feedback has the exact same, so I'm just gonna write here so we're aware that's negative feedback. In positive feedback, we've still got the same six steps, right? One, two, three, four, five, and six. And like I said, those steps are still gonna be, we need a stimulus, we need a receptor. What else is there, what's next? The afferent signal, which sends the signal to the control center, which then sends the signal called an efferent signal to the effector. So it's exactly the same, but in this case, in positive feedback, the outcome exacerbates or amplifies the stimulus. Negative feedback, it negated or did the opposite. Positive feedback, it amplifies the stimulus. Let's think of an example. Okay, a mother is giving birth, right? So labor. The child's head is pushing its way through the cervix. Now the cervix is the neck of the uterus, right? So as the head pushes its way through the neck of the cervix, it stretches. So the stimulus is labor, or baby's head. Baby's head stretching cervix, right? That's the stimulus. Needs to be picked up by receptors. What are the receptors? They're gonna be stretch receptors in the cervix. It sends this signal via an afferent signal to the control center, which is the brain. Specifically, it's going to the hypothalamus of the brain, but that doesn't matter. The control center being the brain. And what's it do? It says, okay, the cervix is stretching because um, it seems like something needs to come out. This thing that's coming out is probably a baby. How do we help this baby come out? I know we need to contract the uterus. If we contract the uterus, it's gonna help push the baby through. How can we track, contract the uterus? Let's release oxytocin, a hormone from the posterior pituitary gland. So it releases oxytocin through an efferent signal. The efferent signal, which is oxytocin floating through the bloodstream, goes to the effector being the uterus. What will the uterus do? The uterus will contract. Now think about this, if the uterus contracts and pushes the baby, the baby's head will continue to stretch the cervix, amplifying the initial stimulus, which then continues to lead through. Stretch receptors, brain releasing oxytocin, more uterine contractions, baby gets pushed out a little bit more but leads to more stretching. Now ultimately, with these uterine contractions, bubble will be pushed straight out. That means there's no longer any stretch and none of this happens and it stops. So positive feedback, which the effector amplifies the stimulus, is a, is a very short-term homeostasis feedback mechanism. Negative feedback, 
negates the stimulus, positive feedback amplifies the stimulus. And that's a quick run through of homeostasis.